Okay, so it is getting on in Advent now. We're almost to Christmas. It's not Christmas yet. Don't start shit with me. Okay, but we're going to like take it up today with a little bit more of a Christmassy vibe because we're going to talk about my man, who should be your man, St. Wenceslaus, or as we say in Czech, Svati Václav. Okay, he's a big deal for us. He's our national saint. And you might get that Christmas vibe of him because I think you maybe know that Christmas carol, Good King Wenceslaus. Yeah. Okay, well, you should, because it's good. So we're going to talk a little bit about him today. Um, the reason he's a Christmas carol is because he's got this whole miracle that goes down specifically on the 26th of December, which we call Boxing Day, but it's also the Feast of St. Stephen's, right? And it's also the second day of Christmas, uh, for those of you paying attention and doing Christmas right. Well, here's a little bit about background about our man. He is, of course, the King of Bohemia, as the carol lets you know. He's kind of a big deal because this is right about the time this is in kind of like the 8th, 9th century when the Czechs are becoming Christianized fully. So like his mom was a big pagan. His grandma was a Christian. Uh, his mom killed his grandma because she was a pagan. You know how it be doing. So Wenceslaus eventually attains the kingdom and he's a big Christian. He's trying to make Czechs Christian. It's a bit of a thing. Uh, the Czechs join the Holy Roman Empire, which is kind of cool for them. Uh, it makes them like a little more involved in Christian Europe and it kind of like raises their profile. Although a bunch of people are kind of persnickety about it because they don't like uh, having Germans be the boss of them, which, you know, that attitude will continue for some time. But he's the king, right? And he's like doing his king thing. But because he's like a big time Christian, he's doing all of the little things that are going to lead you to be a saint, right? Like my boy wearing a hair shirt under his robes. My boy refusing to eat meat and live in a vegetarian diet. My boy praying through the night and not sleeping, right? So the Christmas Carol focuses on this miracle where he wakes up on the Feast of Stephen. He looks out the window and he sees this poor dude like, gathering wood for fuel for his fire. So he says to his page, hey, you see that guy, where's this dude live? And page goes, oh man, he lives out there by the forest, underneath the mountain, mm, mountains in Bohemia, a little eh, few on the ground, but maybe they're like referring to kind of like the Petchen Hill or something, we're not sure. Anyway, so Wenceslas is like, well, this seems like a good time to like really do a nice thing. Just jumps up, puts his boots on, and he goes and finds the poor man's house, brings his page with him, brings a bunch of food and firewood and all the stuff and like gives it to your boy. Like a very nice thing to do, right? But as they're walking back and it's like really cold and it's really snowing, the page is like struggling because, you know, it's cold out here. So Wenceslas is like, okay, chill, follow me. And if you just put your foot in foot in my footsteps, then it'll be okay. And the miracle there is that all of the footsteps that Wenceslas laid were super hot. So the page is just basically like having a nice summer stroll behind Wenceslas. Now the medieval versions of this miracle kind of include that maybe there was blood in his footsteps, which is not like particularly as uh, comfy for Christmas spirits, but you know, we like it. Uh, we stand a bloody king. Uh, why is this important and why do we think about it at all? Well, it's an interesting kind of like microcosm of what it takes to become a saint in the medieval period. So if you want to be a saint, it really, really helps that you're royal, first of all, because that helps get the attention of the church, right? The church notices kings. Um, if you're poor, like it's hard for anyone to kind of like get to know your name. But also, it means that you have stuff to give up to prove your holiness. Like, nobody cares if you're wearing rags and you can only eat vegetables if you're poor because you were already wearing rags and couldn't afford to eat meat, right? So it's like, well, that's not particularly holy. But if a king who has access to super nice things actually decides to give this up, then that proves he's super holy. It's like basically saying, no, I'm not going to take advantage of all my advantages. That kind of proves you're holy, if that makes sense. But then the other thing is, after you die or whatever you're, you know, because that's when you need to be a saint because you need to come up with the miracles after you die. That's when the church starts paying attention. So if people like commoners say to the church, yo, this guy is performing a lot of miracles after his death, then the church goes, oh, okay, well, he's a king. That's like pretty fine. And usually they just like give the nod, give the thumbs up. Of course, at this point in the medieval period, the church was just basically like, well, if the locals think he's a saint, he's probably a saint. There isn't the same kind of like multiple tests that you have to prove. 
But for ordinary people, the thing that's important is that there are miracles. And, you know, Wenceslaus had one during his life. He helps his page boy out. He was a really great king. He was doing the kind of stuff that people want to see, which is like taking care of his own people, not like lording it over everyone. And um, he did come up with some miracles when he was dead. They're kind of wild. A lot of them are about freeing slaves from, who are Christian uh, from pagans who own them. Some of them are like sort of haunting dudes who are like blind and being like, you need to go to Prague and pray to me and then you won't be blind anymore. But, you know, that works out for them because they're not blind. So I guess that everyone's happy despite like the multiple kind of hauntings and threats and dreams. Who am I to say what is holy, you know? But it's a nice thing to think about in like this time of austerity and like not particularly great government on the whole that this is something leaders can aspire to. They can aspire to like looking at poor people and saying, you know, this is something that I can actually get involved with. This is something that I can change. So, you know, let's all think about my man, St. Wenceslas today, and, you know, feel a little more Christmassy. Help a brother out. Think a little bit about saintship. Be your own saint. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Merry Christmas?